Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Randy Kilo, November 4, Yankee Bravo Alpha. Uh, this morning, I'm going to demonstrate a uh, um, Raspberry Pi 4 loaded with the MFJ uh, Rig Pi version 3 operating system or image, and it's connected to an FT991A for uh, remote operations. Um, I'm very impressed with it. Um, if you looked at my previous video as far as loading it onto a SD card or a solid state drive, which is I, what I use, uh, it's exactly the same. Same kind of setup. But uh, MFJ has added some new features to this, which is kind of cool. Uh, added more bands um, to the setup that you can actually uh, adjust um, I like it. it it loaded quickly macros loaded right up uh, no issues uh, audio works great um, just to remind everybody for my um, FT991A I solely use that for local repeaters I use a flex 6400 for all my HF but I wanted the same capabilities as far as remote operations of my Flex, I mean my FT991A. So I did some research and I came across this at the uh, Huntsville Hamfast. Um, yeah, I like this. It, work, it seems to work really well. I've got it integrated. Uh, I use my FT991A via LAN, via home, or I've also set up websites to uh, a DDNS that would direct it right to my uh, to my internal server uh, rig pi server and uh, so I can use this remotely it works great on the cell phone works great on laptop uh, I do travel and this gives me the capability of um, still you know using the local repeaters calling into the local net when I'm out of town so anyway, so if you look at the screen, and, and it looks very much the same, but there's some changes. Like I said, they added additional frequencies or bands on here. Um, what I like here is these bars here, you're a little more adjustable of the range. Um, slider overrides, for example. Um, the mic goes up to nine. Now, I have mine going through a um, mixers at home and even tried it remotely and I don't need much gain at all I get plenty of gain so I don't really change it except I adjust the mic back to nine um, but that kind of gives you the rate of the selector here as high as it's gonna go it goes to nine or it goes to eight and let me see here I'm gonna go to menu on the radio Oops, excuse me and you see mic gain on there right uh, you could probably see it it's and I'm not sure how to get the cursor over to it but you see mic gain it says eight here it says seven it's not exact but it's close um, it goes to nine there and I generally put it at zero which on the my on the radio shows one um, if you, for example, um, one thing I also added is the uh, remote mic and desktop mic. Um, I always usually just go remote. Uh, even in my ham shack, I just do it via LAN. But um, let me see if I can find that here somewhere. Um, yeah, it goes here. Go to menu. And there it is. Um, remote mic and it would be rear in the, in the uh, 74 for the FT991 or if I want to go desktop you see it changed to mic so that's one thing I've added to a mic a mac, my macros to be able to adjust that and I 99% of the time I'll stay with remote stay via LAN I do have direct connects through my mixer to the radio and the mic through the radio on the PTT but I actually like this better um, and using the PTT up here instead of my desktop PTT now my flex I use the uh, when I'm in my off here at the ham shack I do use the uh, uh, mic here but uh, remotely I do the same thing in flex I just use my mouth to key it off um, so that's kind of cool 
these sliders. You can adjust them. Uh, of course, macros are kind of the same, and these are all my macros I use for it. I have my test frequencies that I use, just at low power if I got a dummy load hooked up to the radio. Um, and then on my local repeaters, I call them out in one of the macro buttons. Uh, the big one is squelch. Uh, I set it to 60 if I'm um, just scanning. Or if I'm testing, I'll set it to zero and I'll, I'll demo that. And then I can scan the bands or the repeaters. I can scan them or I can stop scan. I can power the radio on, power it off. And of course, here's my desk mic, remote mic, and he, here's the actual macros for those. So that works really, really well. Um, go back to the setting. What else is there that's exciting? Um, setup's the same way. Uh, you just set up your radio. Um, make sure you get your R port set up with your uh, um, driver, uh, USB silicone driver. Uh, it's always the first one. I've tried the second one when you go to do that. There's two of them, and it's always the first one that works for me. And you can set your power on your radio if you want. Um, the advanced radio is exactly the same. Um, I didn't change anything on it when I set it up. It all came up the same as I did on version 2 of the uh, Rig Pi server. Um, now what's kind of cool on, on their uh, website, on this uh, the website, you can go up there and you can go directly to forums too. If you want to look at the forums, see what the message is out there for Rig Pi support. If you don't know how to do something, Go to this website. Um, they they have the answers for you, and it's just rigpi at groups.io. Yeah, so that comes in very handy. That's kind of how I learned. First off, I'm not a macro person, and so I had to figure out these macros. And I'm good. I'm good at copying and and, and making changes. Um, and I think I explained this before. For example, the the macros and and and, and buttons. Um, each one of my my radio are programmed the first memory channels are pro programmed up to 23 with uh, uh, the repeaters so I went and adjusted the macros and, and here's the only adjustment you made 31 for button 1 32 for button 2 so on first all the way up to 39 and then once you get to 39 to start off to number 10 I changed this to one and took this back to zero and started counting off again. So it's really, really simple to do. Um, the scan up button or macro is this. Uh, to stop the scan, I do this. And it's the only difference between the two are the, uh, here it's 31 to scan up and then 30 to stop scan. Of course, power on, power off. Those are kind of default when you load, uh, first load the image. And then this desktop mic, I adjust these, and here goes to uh, that change that setting on the radio 31 and excuse me 30 and then 31 to uh, go to remote, which takes you to the rear in the menu screen. Okay, I'll turn that off, go back to the radio, and that's kind of what it looks like. Um, now here's an example squelch if I want to test it and I turn it back off and what generally just I sit there I want to see what's going on I hit scan up and you say so it takes a few seconds to show up here uh, you can see in the bottom right uh, the actual radio uh, scanning through the frequencies uh, there is a little latency in shown in here, but the fact is, uh, if somebody keys, keys up a repeater, you'll hear it before you actually see it lock into that repeater up here. So it's just a few seconds delay latency in it. Um, generally, because I, I um, um, live close to all the repeaters, I usually keep the power, and I'll try to actually keep it about 20, 23 watts. I don't put out a lot of power to the repeaters. Uh, but it works works really really well um, Let me see if I can do a quick demo just I'm gonna do a Scott stop the scan I'll go to my test frequency 
and you'll see it come up and it change, changed uh, the frequency of it. I've got a little uh, little handheld here and I'll test it first with the radio. Test one, two, three and that seemed to work and now we key up the, my FT991A test one, two, three so I got it back from the from my my radio through the repeater back to this handheld actually it wasn't going through repeater the simplex but it just shows it's working and my audio is getting out um, let me go ahead and go back to scan now and there's really not a lot of activity going on uh, let me just key up a repeater real quick I'm gonna stop the scan and we'll key up this repeater and go to frequency and on frequency hit PTT let go and it hit the repeater so and I do have a short demo here I was uh, um, talking to the morning brew and I'll play that video here in a second so anyways uh, I think it's a good buy now I of course I purchased the uh, rig pie version 2 last August had the opportunity to go ahead and get a discount of only $5.99 or something like that but uh, I was too eager I didn't want to go through the nonsense trying to get hold of somebody so I paid its full price which 29 bucks no big deal uh, I love it uh, it works great works great on the solid state drive uh, one thing I know with um, these um, rig pies or um, raspberry pies that the SD card is easily corrupted uh, I run a media server and um, often it'll get shut down without logging out and power down the, uh, the uh, rig pie and often the uh, SD card will corrupt um, I have tried that with this SD card, excuse me, the solid state card. I have never once had it fail me, uh, even if I advertently shut down. Now, one of the ways to shut down is just hit settings, system, and this will be a safe shutdown, shut down Rig Pi. Or if you want to reboot the Rig Pi, you can reboot the Red Pi. But this is the safe way to shut it down. Um, and so generally that's what I try to do but I gotta be honest with you um, my um, radios and the server the uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 server is all connected to a web switch so I turn everything on through with my phone I um, don't actually hit power buttons at the house I do that with my flex radio it allows me to power up the radios power down the radios and uh, often I'll forget to go ahead and shut this down and I'll just shut the uh, web relay down and kill the power to the radio and the, and the server but I've never had it fail with the solid state drive to boot right back up when I powered it up so I recommend following the you know go to settings and do a uh, shutdown properly but if you forget it if you're on a solid state drive generally you're not going to have a problem i ain't saying you'll never have a problem but i've never had a problem i've probably done this oh over the last uh couple months 100 200 times just testing it w4hsv oh. so um it works good uh let me jump in throw in a quick video of a demo this morning I misrepresented a uh, misrepresented the uh, Raspberry Pi as a as a uh, rig Pi 4 but it's actually a Raspberry Pi 4 that's installed but I'll play that video real quick here yeah good morning everybody uh, well today I'll be finalizing some videos uh, for YouTube uh, the kn4yba.com this one is particularly related to uh, using repeaters remotely from uh, in my phone or laptop I'm using a, a rig pi 4 with a MFJ uh, rig pi server version 3 loaded to it so 
Matter of fact, I'm creating a video this morning as part of the video series uh, to do that. So I'll be working on that today, finalize that. Of course, a weekend to be grandkids and perhaps a motorcycle ride on the Harley. Over. Well, so this is the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 loaded with the MFJ Rig Pi version 3. It absolutely works great for me in my situation. Now, I've never tried it on any of the HF bands because I use my Flex. Probably works the same. I've never tried it. But in my scenario where I'm just using my FT991A for the local repeaters, you can't beat it. I don't think. Anyways, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at admin at kn4yba.com. This is Randy, Kilo November 4, Yankee Bravo Alpha, 73s to everybody. Have a great day.